Captain Nemo, Prince Dakar, Captain of the Nautilus, and Master of All Things Nautical. But what about the Nemo of Fate Grand Order? How well does he compare to his literary counterpart, and what grade would I give his depiction? Let's get into it. Nemo is a rider class servant, which has become the catch-all class for anybody who has some kind of vehicle that they operate, not just people who ride horses. In Nemo's case, this is his submarine, the Nautilus. To say a few words about the Nautilus, it was the submarine captained by Captain Nemo in two books by Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and The Mysterious Island. The submarine was inspired by a French submarine, the Plongeur, which was the first ever submarine not powered by hand. It first launched in 1863, seven years prior to the release of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Suffice to say, Nemo qualifies for the rider class. Next up is his character design, but before we can talk about that, we need to talk about Nemo's spirit origin first. You see, like with Moriarty, Nemo is a phantom spirit consisting of two beings fused into one. In this case, it is a merger of Captain Nemo from the novels of Jules Verne and the Greek god Triton. Now, I hit Moriarty a bit because he was also a phantom spirit consisting of James Moriarty and Max from Der Freischutz. The reason why is because those two characters, a criminal mastermind and a marksman, are a bit of a strange pairing. On the other hand, mixing Captain Nemo with the Greek god Triton is much better, since both of them claim the sea as their home domain. However, between the two, Nemo is the dominant personality, and so it is better to think of the pairing as being Captain Nemo with some extras from Triton. Anyway, Nemo's appearance is fittingly naval, wearing an outfit that bears a close resemblance to the sorts of uniforms you would expect to see from navies of the 19th century. This extends all the way down the Nemo series as well. Everything about their clothing just screams 19th century to me. But did the actual Captain Nemo dress like this? Well, more or less, yes. Depictions tend to vary, and Nemo wasn't actually part of any specific navy. I just use naval uniforms of the time as a point of comparison here. But we also have the captain wearing a turban, giving a hint of his identity as Prince Dakar. This is the only real hint as to Nemo's true origins in his design, and that is fitting because in the Verne novels, other characters had notable trouble figuring out where exactly Captain Nemo was from. But there is one very notable change in Nemo's FGO design when compared to other depictions of the character his age. The captain in the original novels and in adaptations is mostly depicted as somewhere in middle age, but in FGO they went with the complete opposite and made Nemo look more like a child. I can't help but think that this was a deliberate choice by the designers. This veers into characterization a bit, but Nemo certainly does not act like a child. He acts like an experienced sea captain who knows his business. Kind of like how Muramasa is Shiro on the outside, but because of his personality everybody calls him Gramps. I'm not sure why they decided to make the captain look so young. If someone knows, please let me know in the comments. As for connections to Triton in his appearance, it's subtle, but they do exist. Triton is regularly described as being a merman, being the son of the rulers of the seas in the Greek pantheon, Poseidon and Amphitrite. Now, Nemo is obviously not a merman, but he does have one unusual feature that may hint at such an origin, his hair. Starting at the top, the color of his hair is a very light brown, but when you get to the ends, it suddenly turns a deep shade of blue. This extends across the Nemo series as well. All of them have their hair colors like this. Now, I don't have proof that this hair color shift is meant to be a connection to Triton or Merman, so I might just be trying to find something in Nemo's appearance that could create that link. A clearer connection, though, is found on Nemo's staff thing in later ascensions. At the head of the staff lies a large conch shell, now, Triton would make use of a conch shell to change the waves of the sea, calming or quickening them depending upon what was desired. As a whole, I approve of Captain Nemo's design, which gives good links to both Nemo and Triton. The only real question is about the character's age, which almost certainly was a creative decision. Moving into Nemo's skill set, his first skill is Voyager of the Storm. This is a generic skill possessed by a number of other servants who serve as captains of their own ships, like Drake or Blackbeard. Nemo's skill rank is actually the lowest of all the servants who have this skill, though, which makes some sense since this skill concerns a captain's ability to handle dangerous surface conditions while at sea, such as storms. Since the Nautilus is a submarine, though, it doesn't exactly have to worry about such things. Fittingly, Nemo's version of this skill gives him and allies an extra damage boost while near water or in void space. A bit bland, perhaps, but still a good choice. Nemo's second skill is Indefagdable, which is another generic-ish skill you can also find on Heracles, though Nemo's version includes MP Charge as well. It represents his fierce determination to overcome adversity, a guts skill that gives him even more MP Charge if that guts is broken. This also suits the captain pretty well, meshing with his tough personality that lets him push through the many crises that he personally faces while with Caldea. 
Seriously, have you noticed how often he gets wounded or otherwise incapacitated? It seems to happen more often than not. His last skill is Guide for Travel, which is a unique skill for Nemo specifically. It is meant to represent Triton's nature as a guide for seafarers, most notably for the Argo in Greek mythology. Now while this skill is meant to be something Triton adds to Nemo, it actually works for Nemo too since he too is an explorer of the seas who also gives aid to castaways and others who are lost at sea. As for the skill itself, it gives major buffs to Art's card effectiveness, even more so when near water or in void space, as well as a star bomb. Good stuff. Nemo's noble phantasm is Great Ram Nautilus, whereupon he jumps into a submarine, checks in with the crew, and then uses the naval ram to slam into a single enemy. Now, the Nautilus of the novels did indeed have a naval ram, though it is considerably shorter than what is shown in-game, being more of a sharp tip upon the front of the submarine rather than the almost spear-like ram in-game. A small design nitpick, but otherwise this is a very solid choice for Nemo's MP. Also fittingly, this MP does more damage on battlefields either near water or in void space. Another nice detail is that this MP does extra damage to super large enemies. Nemo and the Nautilus at one point in the original novel had to fight off a giant squid. On a side note, I do find it funny that the Nautilus makes use of a naval ram to damage or sink enemy ships. Because one notable way for a surface ship to sink a submarine for ships that lacked anti-submarine weaponry like depth charges was to ram it. Submarines were built strong in order to withstand underwater pressure, but also tended to be smaller and slower than surface ships. During World War I, a German submarine, U-29, was sunk when the battleship HMS Dreadnought rammed it in 1915, the only known instance of a battleship deliberately sinking a submarine. Of course, that was well after Jules Verne wrote his novels. Modern submarines were only just getting started during his day, and would not see major use in war until after his death. Anyway, enough of this. Nemo's whole skill set is very specialized towards fighting either near water or in void space, fitting for a naval captain, which closely parallels Caldea's voyages into void space as well. Because of the buffs his skills get, it makes Nemo extremely dangerous when in those settings, but not so much outside of them. As for the lore connection, his skills and MP are solidly connected with the character, if a bit generic for the first two skills. Nemo is a very capable ally to have whenever having to face dangers on the high seas, which suits both the captain of the Nautilus and the Greek sea god quite nicely. Nemo's craft essence is on the mysterious wandering island, depicting a framed picture of Nemo and the rest of the Nemo series in what looks like the wandering sea base. It is a bit hard to tell thanks to the glare, but this is confirmed in the text of the craft essence, being a picture taken after the events of Imaginary Scramble. Now obviously this craft essence has more to do with Nemo and FGO rather than in the original source material, but considering that FGO's Nemo is pretty much a new character entirely created by fusing Captain Nemo and Triton together, I'm okay with it. On the other hand, the second book Captain Nemo features in is The Mysterious Island, and the island there looks curiously similar to the Wandering Sea in FGO. Hmm, there might be more to this than I thought. And that leads me into Nemo's characterization. Captain Nemo first appears in the early storylines of the second story arc, first appearing in person during the prologue to the Chinese Lost Belt. He actually isn't initially a servant of Chaldea, but rather was summoned by Sion of the Atlas Institute. This is actually why he is a phantom spirit of both Nemo and Triton, because Sion did not have access to Chaldea's summoning system, and so she had to make do by doing a summoning similar to the fused servants from the Shinjuku Singularity. But his identity remains obscured until the Indian Lost Belt, when he identifies himself to the others, as well as his hidden identity of Prince Dakar, who had fled India after the revolt of 1857. He then takes action to assist Chaldea in reaching the Tree of Emptiness, doing this partly to make up for having fled during the revolt while Lakshmi Bai, a servant ally in the Indian Lost Belt, had fought to the end. It is his way of giving an apology to Lakshmi Bai, who had died during the revolt, while he had escaped and spent the rest of his days sailing the seas under the identity of Captain Nemo. But the reason the captain came to the Indian Lost Belt in the first place was as part of the preparations to invade the Atlantic Lost Belt, considered the toughest of them all and which would need a solid seagoing vessel. After the events in India, you then get thrown into another notable messy situation during a test run of the Nautilus, the Imaginary Scramble event a notable side story between Lost Belts 4 and 5 that will become a main interlude for us NA players in about a year or so. Captain Nemo is one of the stars of this event, though perhaps not the brightest one. He had the misfortune of sharing this event with the very memorable Van Gogh. Anyway, it is during this journey through void space that the captain and the protagonist bond, a partnership forged by working together to escape the void sea and its many dangers. 
The personality of the captain is of someone who is clearly an old hand when it comes to voyaging on the seas. He is strict, stern, and does not like it when people cause mischief upon his ship. This is all for good reason, though. Not only is the Nautilus effectively Nemo's home, both in the original story and in FGO, it is also directly connected to his spirit origin. Whenever the ship gets damaged, that damage is reflected back upon Nemo, which is why he is taken out of commission whenever the Nautilus, or later the Storm Border, takes serious damage. The original Nemo is noted as being someone who takes charge in difficult situations, and who is also fiercely protective of his crew members. He is also noted for his compassion, being someone who dislikes oppressors, and so tries to help the victims of it. You can see all of that in Nemo's FGO depiction, being kind underneath his gruff exterior and more than willing to do what it takes to keep his allies safe. Nemo might be a stern and tough ship captain, but he is exactly the sort of captain you want when you come face to face with dangerous situations, something Caldea experiences frequently. But the Captain Nemo of Verne's novels is more than just a tough, experienced captain. He actually was also the one to design and build the Nautilus himself, making him a very intelligent and capable man of many talents. Now, at first, you might think this is not really shown in game. You generally only see the captain side of Nemo. But then you take into account the Nemo series, which are all different aspects of himself partitioned into separate bodies thanks to Xion's own skills. Then you realize that Nemo is effectively running everything upon the Nautilus. Captain, medical, engineering, cooking, and more. The captain is also noted as having been a polygot, someone who knows a large number of foreign languages. But this doesn't come up in FGO as far as I know. Even so, Captain Nemo's intelligence and mastery of all things nautical is clearly shown once you take into account the Nemo series. Speaking of the Nemo series, while the literary Captain Nemo obviously didn't have the ability to clone himself like this, I give this a pass for two reasons. First, because it is explained as something he gained from his summoner, Sion, and so isn't entirely his doing. The second reason, though, is simply, it makes it more believable. If it was just Nemo by himself trying to command, pilot, and maintain the Nautilus or Storm Border, that would be silly. And so he gets himself a crew to assist. Besides, the Nemo series are fun whenever they appear. Sadly, one thing that is left out of FGO is Nemo's fondness for music, specifically for playing the organ. Also, while I did just cover how Nemo's many talents are reflected in the Nemo series, we don't get to see his tastes in art or his extensive library, though we at least get a reference to his interest in marine biology due to how often the captain uses sea-related terms in his dialogue. I guess you can't include everything, but these are still notable omissions from the Nemo of FGO. And now for the verdict. What grade would I give Captain Nemo's depiction in Fate Grand Order? Well, it is pretty good. His design and skill set have plenty of solid links to both the literary Captain Nemo as well as the Greek god Triton. The same can also be said for his MP and craft essence, even if some creative license is taken. As far as his characterization goes, it is pretty good, though there are a few parts of Nemo that are either missing or we have yet to see in Fate Grand Order. In other words, I'd say Nemo's depiction is pretty solid all around, but still having some room for improvement. And so for a final grade, I'm going to give Captain Nemo, Captain of the Nautilus, a B. Since Nemo has become a part of the main cast ever since Lost Belt 4, I do expect that we will see more of him in the future. Perhaps some of the criticisms I've made here will get resolved in later storylines. And if you would like to see a video on another Phantom Spirit, check out my video on James Moriarty here. Until next time.